Well, in a way, I see meditation as my way to recharge that battery and, and to become better and better at, at seeing the warning signs when that battery is not recharged. Because, of course, I wasn't always good at that. In fact, I was terrible at that. Eight years ago, I collapsed from sleep deprivation and burnout. And yet, if you had asked me that morning, how are you, I would have said, fine. Because being exhausted and being burnt out has become the new normal. But I'm so glad this is primarily women and a few enlightened men. Because I really think women will be leading this revolution together with you, Bob, of course. <laughs> and I think one of the reasons that, is that the latest research shows that we women are suffering more from stress. Like, it takes a greater toll on our health. Women in stressful jobs, and I'm sure that's everybody in the ballroom and on the stage, um, have a 40% greater risk of heart disease and a 60% greater risk of diabetes. So ladies, we can't afford to do it the way men have been doing it for decades. We have to do it differently. We have to change it for everybody, and men will be incredibly grateful to us. Can you talk a little bit about what that third metric is? And both of you, how, are we, how do we need to redefine success? I realized that our definition of success had shrunken down to these two metrics of money and power, which is like trying to sit on a two-legged stool. And the third metric, which includes you know, our well-being, wisdom, wonder, and giving, had really not, become, not been part of our lives. And for me, meditating is one of the most direct ways, as well as sleep, of course, to reconnect with that. And, and just one more thing, as parents, you know, I feel the greatest gift we can give to our children is something that will help them cope through whatever challenges face them, e even after we're no longer here. And for me, there is nothing like that tool of being able to reconnect with your own source of strength. So Patricia, same kind of question to you about, but how do you incorporate meditation into your life, given the demands that are coming at you constantly, how do you do that? I mean, you said you're not there, no, you weren't defined that way, you weren't born that way. No, work at definitely it. not. <laughs> but um, I remember a couple of years ago, I wrote a book, um, A Seat at the Table, and there was a quote from Lily Tomlin who said, you know, even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat. Um, <laughs> I thought about that. and. Um, <laughs> Do you really want to be in a rat race? And the other part, which um, goes way back, as I said, my, uh, when I was graduating from PS99 in Brooklyn, New York, and I uh, was 12, 13, and my teacher wrote in my book, To Thine Own Self Be True. And at that point, I didn't know I had an own self. <laughs> and I really didn't know what it meant to be true, but it, it stuck with me. And over the years, I kept coming back to that quote, what does it mean to be true to yourself? And very early on, I wanted to find a way to be successful how I defined it, but without turning into somebody else. No matter where you go, <laughs> there you are. And you want to enhance who you are, you want to improve in certain ways, but you don't want to be shaped all the time by external forces and being really not in charge of your own ship. So in terms of meditation, I've been doing, I, as Bob outlined, different uh, approaches, mindfulness. I'm not a good candidate for mindfulness. Um, and uh, after yoga, didn't work. And that's why I thought I wasn't a candidate for meditation. And it wasn't until um, doing transcendental meditation that it wasn't a question of how do I find the time. It is you look forward to it. Unlike exercise, which I don't look forward <laughs> to, you really look forward to it. It's your oasis. It's your life preserver. All the metaphors that you can use and it strengthens you, and especially, as Ariana said, and I've known Ariana for a long time, and I do have to say, especially since your daughters are here, 
This is someone who's managed to be extremely successful, but is such a great mom as well. And I remember meeting your sister in Jesse, grief. I do. Your sister, the whole family is amazing, and your, your mother as, as well. So I think you address these things in an authentic way because you want to be authentic in your life. So it's not a question of how do you fit it in, that's the wrong approach. You really, how do you not put it there front and center? Then you fit everything else around that's it. Great. All right. Thank On that you. note, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Patricia thank Harrison. Thank you very much. And Ariana Huffington. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm good. Thank you.